Hello, in this video we will be covering uh, Fourier analysis. Uh, now, uh, Fourier analysis uh, is employed for uh, converting a periodic function into its harmonics. So, as per the Fourier theorem, the statement goes like this that any periodic function ft of frequency omega can be represented as a sum of simple harmonic functions whose frequencies are integral multiples of uh, omega. Omega is the frequency of the source function. Now, uh, graphically this can be represented uh, in this fashion. If we have say sort of a square wave, right? uh, now, uh, the, that square wave can be represented as individual harmonics whose frequencies are integral multiples of the frequency of the original square wave. Now this one is the first harmonic whose frequency is equal to that of the source function. Then for square wave in particular, when it's beginning like this at zero, uh, we only have the odd numbered harmonics. So after the first one, we have the third one. As you can see here, this is the third harmonic. So uh, its frequency is three times that of the source function. And likewise, we have the fifth, seventh and so on multiple harmonics. Now mathematically this Fourier theorem can be represented as the function in time ft is given by a0 which is a constant term. It, this signifies the offset from the abscissa plus we have a1 cos omega t. The first harmonic has frequency omega and b1 sin omega t. Together these two terms that is a1 cos omega t plus b1 sin omega t put together they constitute the first harmonic. Now this can be uh, perceived in the form of two vectors. This is vector A with cosine which is leading by a phase angle of pi by 2 and the other one is B. Now the resultant given by this uh, rectangle is the vector V along the diagonal of the rectangle. Now the magnitudes of A and B if the ratio is maintained, if we increase the magnitudes of both A and B by the same proportion, the magnitude of the resultant V will increase accordingly. So in other words, the overall magnitudes of A and B, they determine the magnitude of the resultant vector v, uh, v. However, we can also decide uh, to change the magnitudes of A and B in such a manner that the magnitude of this vector V remains unaltered while its angle with respect to this vector B uh, undergoes a change. So in other words you can say that both these A and B, these orthogonal vectors, they uh, determine the magnitude as well as the phase angle of the resultant vector V. Now when we add up all these harmonics A1, A2 and B1, B2 and so on or mathematically we can put it in this form a n cos n omega t plus b n sin n omega t. So we have infinite number of harmonics here. So all these harmonics put together will make up for the shape of the source function. Now if the source function is having some offset with respect to the abscissa, right, that offset can be uh, offset along the ordinate axis that, that can be uh, taken care of by this constant term a0. Now this a0 is nothing but area under the curve over one cycle, one time period given by 2 pi by omega and this area under the curve is divided by time period which is uh, that is 1 by tau or you can say this is omega upon 2 pi. Likewise these are the expressions for a n and b n terms. Now, uh, because these integrals for the analytical analysis can at times be quite lengthy to solve. Right? So there are some shortcut techniques also. For example, if the function is even or is odd, then we'll get only the cosine terms or the sine terms respectively. There are some other uh, uh, time saving techniques also which are given here on this slide. Now we'll be emphasizing this entire analysis with the help of an example of a square wave to begin with. So here we have a function ft which equals minus half 
when t lies between minus pi and 0 and ft equals plus half when t lies from z, uh, between 0 and pi. So the total time period of this function is from minus pi to plus pi that is 2 pi or in the words we can say that the cyclic frequency of this function is 1 radian per second. Okay, because now this will uh, turn out to be an odd function. So we can expect that only sine terms will be there and the cosine terms, the arguments thereof will become zero. And further because f theta plus pi is minus f theta and f minus theta is minus f theta. So we'll have only odd terms uh, of uh, the corresponding series. So we'll have only odd sine terms in this case. So here is a solution. You can keep a screenshot. You can pause to just note down for this. Now, as the function is symmetrical about uh, the abscissa, so A0 term works out to be zero because the two areas, one above and the other below the horizontal axis, they are equal and opposite, so they cancel out and we get A0 equal to zero. Further, as uh, discussed, uh, discussed earlier, as the function is an even function, so an is zero. So we just proceed to determine bn and here is the detailed solution for that. Now, once we obtain the value of bn after substituting the limits, so here is how we can write the function. So ft becomes taking two by pi common, sine t, here omega is one, because the source uh, frequency, source function frequency was also one radian per second, so here omega is one. Then we have the third harmonic having frequency 3, t, uh, 3 omega sorry and then 5 omega and so on. So all these are sine waves with decreasing amplitudes. That again is uh, a, a general behavior of Fourier series. The higher harmonics have uh, smaller amplitudes. So the sum of all these sine waves it should lead towards the formation of a square wave. Now we'll emphasize this particular thing uh, by virtue of uh, a simulation in Excel. So here it goes. We start with the first harmonic which has the frequency same as that of the source function. So it starts from here. Here it completes uh, uh, an angle of pi. right? And the time taken is also pi here because the time period is 2 pi. And here it completes one cycle at 2 pi. Now we add the second harmonic to this one. I have achieved this fact by using circular references in Microsoft Excel. So this is the effect of adding the first two harmonics uh, that, that of frequency omega and 3 omega. Now we add the fifth harmonic that is the third one in the series then seventh and so on we keep adding we will go till 25 and the shape of the resultant of these harmonics will come pretty close to that of the source function that is the square wave. Now you can see we have got now, now we have got 25 harmonics. So it is pretty closely resembling a square wave. Yes, of course, there are some spikes here at the changeovers. Reason being, uh, uh, whenever there is an abrupt change in the signal value, the, it is not uh, quite uh, uh, easy for the sine waves to make up for that. So they do exhibit some spike. That's normal. So guys, that's all in as far as the uh, Fourier series is concerned for now. Thanks for watching.